Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a privilege and an honor the Lord has given to us again to come together, to be on this platform, the Zoom platform, Facebook, YouTube, praise be unto God. I trust that you are excited about what God is going to be doing for us today. We are gathered together in his presence to hear from him and to, to call upon him. For he says to call upon me and I would answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not of. My name is Melch Pope, pastor of this wonderful church, to God be the glory, the QEP Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International. Praise be unto God. I am reading from Psalm 37, from the 23rd verse before we pray, Psalm 37 from verse number 23 on to verse number 26. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Verse number 26 again of Psalm 37, he is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Let us pray, please. Let us unite our faith wherever you may be at this time. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. You can give him a high note of praise where you are. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We adore you. We magnify you. We glorify you, O oh God. This is the day that you have made, and we are commanded to rejoice and to be glad in it. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you. You are ever merciful, and your seed is blessed, O oh God. We glorify you. And this day, Father, we ask of you to intervene in every situation. You said as we call upon you, you would answer us and show us great and mighty things that we know not of. Lord, even as we would go into a time of worship, that you would anoint your servant father for the ministry of the word your minister your handmaiden oh god that you're going to use some mightily this evening in the name of jesus the christ and those who will be interceding presenting our petitions and our needs to you this evening oh god that you would show yourself strong on our behalf hallelujah how we thank you for your grace which is sufficient to keep us to uphold us blessed be the wonderful name of the lord so be thou glorified we pray in the name of jesus christ amen and amen the privilege and the honor is mine to 
ask at this time Brother Ricardo Silly to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Brother Ricardo, good evening, and it's over to you now. Praise his name. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Pook. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, help me as we celebrate our God this afternoon. Okay. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Celebrate, celebrate, come on and celebrate, celebrate, Jesus, celebrate, for he has risen, he has risen, and he lives forevermore. He has risen, he has risen. Come on and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Mm -hmm. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. Come on and celebrate, celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. For he has risen, he has risen, and he lives forevermore. He has risen, he has risen. Come on and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Come on and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Come on and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Yes, let's continue to celebrate him here this afternoon. Thank him for the day. Thank him for all that was done that he was able to do in his name. All right, as we continue, let's praise him. Uh, for he is our Father. Every praise is his. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship is one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. To our God, glory, hallelujah, is to our God, is, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah. To our God, glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God, is to our God. Glory, hallelujah, with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my savior, God, my healer, he's my healer, God, my deliverer, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord, every praise, every praise is to our God. 
Sing hall, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Hallelujah. Yes, every praise is to our God, as he is worthy and he's worthy to be praised. And join me in this last song. I just um, shout to the Lord as we shout his shout praises unto him here this afternoon. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. And all of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath and all that I am worship you. Shout to the Lord or the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of these, the wonders of your mighty love, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength. Let every breath and all that I am never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. The mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hand. Forever I love you. Forever I'll stand. Promise I have in nothing compares to the promise I have. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Hallelujah. Nothing compares to him. All right, let's continue to praise him here this afternoon and all the days of our lives. Over, over to you, Pastor. Oh. Thank you very much, Brother Ricardo. Silly, yes, nothing compares to the promise that we have in him. And that is the truth. Jesus said, I am come that you would have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Silly. As we continue to worship him, Again, I want to welcome every one of you on the various platforms, Zoom, YouTube, Facebook. We want to ask of you, please, to like the page, share it, subscribe to it, and comment. Please put your questions. We will make every effort 
to seek to answer those questions. And certainly your prayer requests, put them on. This is a time more than ever before we need to pray. And Jesus told us that, you know, according to Luke 18, one men ought always to pray and not to give in. So don't be afraid. Put the, the, the needs on the chat. We want to praise God. For those of you who are joining for the very first time, please put your name on the chat and if you, if you care to, and we'll be happy to uh, welcome you, mention your name, thank you for coming on, and please tell someone so that we could share on a Tuesday evening where we can connect, where we have committed, and we can commune with our God and Father. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Well, we've been having Minister Cheryl Jordan with us um, last week and the week before I mentioned, or it's mentioned concerning her. She is a poet, an author, uh, she continues to write. She loves writing. And um, she's been doing a fantastic job. And we bless God for you, Sister Cheryl. And tonight, again, we are going to have her come in to share what God has laid upon his heart for us. Well, Minister Cheryl Jordan, it's over to you now. God bless you as you continue to share God's precious word with us this evening. Praise Thank God. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. It's a pleasure to be here again. Uh, well, Pastor has already prayed, so let's just get right into our responsibilities. We started last week and we looked at our responsibility to pray and to fast. So we continue. Uh, our next responsibility is to study his will. Now, suppose you had a really wealthy relative and you all had really had a good relationship. They gave you a copy of their will and then they died. But you never opened the will because you were too busy. You had no time. The traffic is really bad. You know, the kids have lots of homework and they have lessons. On the weekend, you are trying to distress. You simply have no time to read that will. Contained in it would be something that would change your life, would make your life a little easier. But still, you have no time to read the will. Now, that is not really going to happen in real life. But when we neglect to read the will of God, it's almost the same thing. Contained in his word are treasures for us, things to help us get through our day, and lots of other benefits. So we need to study his word. Now, I'm quoting from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And verse 14 of the same chapter says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, we love him and we love his word. During his earthly ministry, Jesus was tempted by the devil. What did he do? He quoted the word. He did not preach a sermon. He did not ignore the temptation. He did not pull around, you know, to say, well, do you know who I am? How dare you tempt me? He did not engage the enemy in a long conversation. He simply quoted the word. And he quoted the word that was relevant to the situation. You may be tempted at times, and you also need to quote the word. So that is a good reason to study it. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21, Jesus said that those who are going to enter the kingdom of heaven are those who do the will of his father. But how are we going to do his will if we don't know it? And how are we going to know it if we don't read his word? So that's another good reason to read his word. 
Jesus warned about deception in the last days, Matthew 24, 5. But how are we going to guard against deception? Well, it can look pretty convincing. It can look and sound like the truth. The devil is called the deceiver of the nations and he and his workers are able to transform themselves to look as if they belong to the light. 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. A wolf that looks like a wolf fools no one, but a wolf disguised as a sheep can fool many, Matthew 7, 15. We want to live a life pleasing to God, so we hide his word in our hearts, Psalm 119, 11. We study his word so that we know how to pray. When we pray, we should use the word of God for it is far more powerful than our own words. Use the word that is relevant to your situation. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus quoted parts of the Old Testament. He also quoted parts of the Old Testament in his prayer in John chapter 17. So we need to read and study his word so that our prayer will be more effective. Well, the next reason should make us all happy. We read, study, and meditate his word to have good success and to make our way prosperous, Joshua 1, 8. Now, there are times when we are going to be challenged about choices you have made, and you need to be able to defend yourself, 2 Timothy 2, 15. The Bible should be read and studied in its entirety. Some of us refuse to read most of the Old Testament, confining ourselves only to the book of Psalms and a bit of the Proverbs. Jesus quoted from the Old Testament, and we should at least read it. We move on now to our next responsibility, to love. We are to love God, Deuteronomy 6, 5. If we love him, we obey him, John 14. 15. We are to love each other, 1 John 4, 11. Now, we can't pretend to love God and refuse to love our brother because we can't see God, but we can see our brother. So, if once we love God, we are automatically we are going to love our brother. 1 John 4, 20. We are to love our neighbors as ourselves, Leviticus 19, 18. And this Last one is a bit of a tough one. Love our enemies. Mark 5, 40, sorry, Matthew 5, 44. As Jesus noted, if we love only those who love us, we are not different from sinners. Luke 6, 32. Now, sometimes there are some persons that they're just difficult to love. You, you've tried, but you know, it's, it is difficult. And I'm speaking about kingdom residents. Pray about it. Seek his help. He will definitely help you. Christ died for all. He did not issue any exemption clauses on the cross to say, I'm dying for this group and I'm not dying for the other group, or this group cannot come to me. So who are we to tell others by our attitude? If it was up to me, you wouldn't even be accepted to this kingdom. Some of us need to repent. Our next responsibility is to give. God loves a cheerful giver. Second Corinthians 9, 7. Give and it shall be given unto you. Luke 6, 38. Our next responsibility to witness. We must tell others about him. Matthew 28, 19. It was never intended that Jesus be the best kept secret around. While we all can't go up on foreign missionary trips, we can all establish our mission fields where we are, where we live, where we work, where we study, wherever is our field of influence. And we tell others about it, not only by our words, but also by our actions, Matthew 5, 16. Our next responsibility is to thank, to praise, and to worship. Now in everyday life, someone who neglects to say thank you, well, we view them as ill-mannered and ungrateful. 
someone who refuses to offer praise to someone else when it is due. We think they're selfish and they're inconsiderate. But how does God feel when we neglect to thank, to praise, and to worship him? Someone who thanks you when you do something for them, they encourage you to do something else for them, to give them further. When we wake up in the mornings, do we say, thank you, Lord, for another day? Or do we grumble about what we did not accomplish the day before and what we don't have today? It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, Psalm 92. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, Psalm 107, 8. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, Psalm 138, 2. If you want to invite his presence, praise him, Psalm 22, 3. You won the victory, praise him, 2 Chronicles 20, 22. Our next responsibility is to assemble together, Hebrews 10, 25. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, this pandemic has changed the way in which we assemble. Some of us long for return to regular meetings where we can see each other face to face. But for now, this is one of the ways in which we assemble. It is a different way, but it's a way to assemble. We are assembling right now on Zoom and on Facebook. And later on, some people assemble on YouTube. So uh, we are not to neglect the assembling of ourselves together. Now, in the meanwhile, we continue to have our Sunday morning worship services face-to-face -face for those of us who can make it out face-to-face. -face. And for those who can't, we continue to assemble on different social media platforms. Our next responsibility is to be prepared for his return, Matthew 24, 44. This is extremely important. You see, if you don't carry out this one, Everything else that you did or tried to do over the years, it would really amount to nothing because we are supposed to be ready for his return. And that is a huge responsibility. Now we spoke about heaven last week when we were dealing with the rewards of kingdom residents. We had to be in a state of readiness, even as we occupy ourselves. None of us want to be the one that is left behind. So let us ensure that we are not. And now we'll move on to look at some of the ways in which this kingdom, the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, kingdom of light, how is it different from other kingdoms? In the book of Daniel chapter two, King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream and he dreamt a great image which represented different kingdoms of the world. Now, he had a dream, he got up, he knew that he had dreamt something, he could not remember exactly what it was. He assembled his wise men and then asked them to do something that was really strange. He wanted them to tell him what the dream was and then tell him what it meant. Of course, they could not do that. You know, and they're telling him that he's asking something strange. It only got him more angry and he, ordered all of them killed, even the ones who were not there. So they were going around now killing off the wise men and they eventually got to Daniel and his friends. I suppose by that time, quite a lot of people had already been killed. Of course, Daniel being a kingdom resident was able to recall the dream and to interpret it, something that the others who belonged to a different spiritual kingdom they had been unable to do. Now, in this dream, the great image represented the different kingdoms of the world. The head of fine gold represented the great empire of Babylon, and that was indeed a very powerful kingdom. Now, I know there are differences between empires and kingdoms, but I'm using the two terms interchangeably. But since the Bible refers to kingdoms, the kingdom of Babylon was powerful. But like all earthly kingdoms, it was overthrown. 
following with the kingdoms of Persia, Greece, and Rome. All of these have faded. When kingdoms decline, what's left of them? Usually archeological ruins, which serve as tourist attractions. And we can think of several tourist attractions around the world now that are remnants of previous kingdoms. But our kingdom is eternal. Kingdoms also leave behind the influence in religion, in politics, and in philosophy. Some empires have left really strong influence behind. For example, the Greeks have left us a strong influence in sports. We have the Olympic Games. They have left strong influence in the area of science as well. And of course, in mathematics, as our secondary school students can tell you, about Pythagoras and Isosceles to this day. Now in the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, the great image was demolished by a stone cut without hands. Anything made by hands can be brought down by hands. No human being can claim credit or bring down the kingdom of God by withdrawing enthusiasm, by staging a coup or by mounting an uprising. The kingdom, it, the stone grew bigger and bigger till it filled the earth. So this kingdom is different. Others rise and fall or fade away into history. So they leave behind some influence. This kingdom keeps growing, Acts 2.47. The outlook for this kingdom is amazing. It grows and will eliminate all other kingdoms forever. It will be the only surviving kingdom, Daniel 2.44. The rival kingdom will be condemned to the lake of fire, Revelation 20. Earthly kingdoms get started by powerful and ambitious individuals. The kingdom of God always was, but we always was. The kingdom of God is, he is the great I am. The kingdom will always be, for he can never die. This kingdom, has no beginning and no ending. No one will ever be studying the rise and fall of this kingdom, Psalm 92. When a kingdom ventures into new territory or expands, it comes after a big event, a war, Revelation 28, a surrender or declaration, Philippians 2, 10 to 11, a royal wedding, Revelation 19, 9, and 21, 2. So what is a big event that will mark the coming of this kingdom to this? It's the second coming of our Lord. The kingdom does not sneak onto new ground or reclaim former territory quietly. Everyone understands that the kingdom is here. The branch of the kingdom that is at present operating on earth is the church. It started with the first coming of our Lord and his subsequent death and resurrection. With the second coming, the kingdom in its entirety will be here. That prayer would have been answered, thy kingdom come, Matthew 6, 10. In the kingdom of God, there's continuous worship and his will is done. We can see the differences here on earth. In his kingdom, there's no opposition, no reluctance, no resistance to his will. And that is certainly not the case on earth now. If you remember Jonah, and some of us can find examples in our own lives. The kingdom of God is coming to Jerusalem, Micah 4, 8. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6, 10. This kingdom is not of this world or in this world. If it was, it would be subjected to the rules and to the laws of this world. The closest we have come to the kingdom of God on earth was the Garden of Eden, and we know how that ended. In the Garden of Eden, there were no predators. In the kingdom of God, there will be no predators of any kind. The lion and the lamb will lie down together. Wolves, bears, and lions shall eat grass. Isaiah 11, 6-7 and 65, 25. So even the animals will be changed. Imagine living in a crime-free, problem-free world, a world without war, strife, disease, 
pain and death. And coming out of the worst of COVID-19, we can all appreciate that. A world without the deceiver, for he and his followers would have been thrown into the lake of fire. It will not be a repeat of the Garden of Eden. The tempter, the deceiver of the nations, the father of lies will be no more. The lake of fire is the destination of the enemy, the antichrist and ordinary human beings who chose to go in that direction. There are two kingdoms. There is no middle ground. There is no neutral territory. These two kingdoms have nothing in common and have two different creatures. Invest in the kingdom of God. Spend your time, energy, and money in a venture that will never go under. If you are not a kingdom resident, it's time to become one. Please repeat this prayer. Father, I repent of all my sins. Please forgive me and accept me into your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you for listening and I return to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister Jordan. Praise be unto God. I tell you, it is power packed with a number of scriptures and we can refer to it. And this is what ought to take a hold of our lives, the word of God. So as the enemy comes against us, we can, as what we heard, or Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out or proceeds from the mouth of almighty God. We wanna go into a time of prayer, petition and intercession. And I've asked two persons, Brother Floyd and Sister Alberta Alexander, Brother Floyd will be lifting up our nation. And those of you who are joining us, you from uh, certainly different parts of, of the Caribbean and the international community, please use this opportunity to call your nation, lift your nation, those in authority uh, to almighty God. We all need for our heavenly father to intervene in our nation. So brother Floyd, he's going to be lifting up the nation of Trinidad and Tobago, and then followed by sister Alberta Alexander. She'll be praying, we continue to come against COVID-19, people are still dying in our nation, Trinidad and Tobago. I can't speak for the other nations, but people are still dying. People are still being tested positive on a daily basis. So we want to continue to speak against that. And then also to pray for the, the wellness, the health and the wellness of the people of God. Brother Patrick Floyd, thank you. God bless you as you lift up our nation, Trinidad and Tobago, in prayer. Let's all agree, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name, Lord. We glorify you as our Lord, as our risen Savior. We come to your throne this evening, Lord, petitioning you on behalf of our nation, Lord. We come knowing that you are all sufficient, all knowing and all wise in all your ways, Lord. We acknowledge you. We humble ourselves before you, Lord, as we approach your throne of grace, your throne of mercy, and your throne of love, Lord. Lord, we come there, God, asking you, Lord, to visit us in this Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, Lord. Hear our cry this evening, Lord, as we approach your throne, as we come there, God, to bring our nation before you, dear God, our nation who need you, dear God, our nation who can only be guided by you, Lord, because you are God who created all things, Lord. And in your creation, Trinidad and Tobago was one of the nations you created, Lord. So Father God, this evening, Lord, we ask for your prayer, Lord, for our president, Lord. We ask your God to lift up our president, uh, Paula Mewicks, Lord. 
We pray a blessing upon her as a leader of this nation, Lord. We pray, mighty God, that you, dear God, cover her, Lord, in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord, in her leadership, in her presidency, Lord, over this Twill Island Republic, Lord. We pray your blessing upon the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, Lord. We pray your blessing that you continue to grant on them a spirit of discernment and understanding, Lord, in the things that you do. In the decision leader, Kamala Pusa be says, Lord, let your anointing be upon her, Lord, that she, dear God, will give good support and necessary guidance, Lord, as it required, dear God, to, towards decision making, Lord. We also lift up all the members of our parliament, Lord, the members of our, our upper house, the Senate, Lord. We pray, dear God, for the government senators, the independent senators, the opposition senators, Lord, that when they meet, Lord, they will be able to speak of things that will advance this kingdom, almighty God, and that will advance your kingdom, that will advance Trinidad and Tobago. We pray for the members of of the lower house, Lord, who are also involved in decision making in legislation, Almighty God. Father God, give them the necessary wisdom and guidance that is needed, Lord, that way they must be able to cooperate and the meeting of minds, Lord, so that the laws that are made, Lord, will be for the advancement of this Republic, Almighty God. We pray also for our third estate, which is the, the media, Lord, that they too will also be able to be. Uh, will also be able to be cooperative and also be able to be responsible in their in their in the, the, their printing and their ex Posing of information. We pray, Almighty God, for your blessing upon all the, the major institutions of this country, Ministry of National Security, the Ministry of Education, Lord. We pray, dear God, that you, dear God, give wisdom and guidance to those persons who have to lead those ministries, the decision makers, the policy makers, Lord, who are in those respective ministries, Lord, that they will be able to continue to do things, Lord, that will safeguard the lives of the children who are being taught. In, at the different levels of our country, Lord. We pray also for the hospital system, Lord, all the healthcare workers, all those who are involved in providing good health care to, to the people who are sick, for those who are suffering one way or the other, Almighty God. We pray also, dear God, for the national security, Lord, that dear God, that the police service will be able to provide the, the necessary support that is needed when they are called upon, Lord. to keep this country safe and wicked crimes that is taking place, almighty God. Father, we pray against the crimes that are taking place in this country, Lord. Presently, there's a scourge in this country, Lord, of, 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 of murders, Lord. Murders even among family members, murders even among gangs, murders even drive-by shooting, Lord. Father, this is a scourge in our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray, dear God, that your anointing be with this country, Lord. We pray, dear God, that you, your blood be sprinkled on the, all the corners of this Queen Island Republic, Lord, from Charlottesville straight down to Ikakas, Lord, from, from Shagramas, Lord, straight down to, to even Scarborough, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, be ministered to the hearts and minds of the people in this country, Lord, because your word declare, Lord, that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from our wicked ways, then and only then you will hear from heaven and heal our landlord. We turn to you, Lord, dear God, to heal our landlord. We turn to you because we, turn, we can turn to no other Lord. You are the author and finisher of our faith. You are the one who can make the crooked part straight. You are the one, dear God, who can turn those who are meant for evil, Lord, turn their hearts around, Lord. You can turn the hearts and mind of those who are involved in, in or planning ne nefarious activities or anything that is not good for the nation or not good even for their own families because some of them are involving their families in, in things that are not right for themselves nor for even their community, Lord. Father God, turn their hearts around, Lord. Let them know that 
there is a Jesus who died on the cross of Calvary for their sins, Lord. There's a Savior who their God can who can provide them with an easier alternative, Lord, because your word declare that you can make a way where there seem to be no way, Lord. We pray, dear God, that you're anointing, dear God, flow, dear God, from house to house. So we come against all these different activities that are taking place that are, are negative towards this country, Lord. Lord, we, we dear God, ask you, dear God, to intervene. Intervene by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Pull down the strongholds, pull down the barriers, pull down all those things that are causing mayhem and, and, and disharmony in, in, among neighbors, among family members, among gangs, Lord. Father God, Lord, stop them on their, in their tracks where they are going to carry out these acts of, uh, against humanity, acts against your fellow man, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit lead, let your Holy Spirit guide and draw them close to the cross, Lord. Draw them unto you, Lord, because there are many, many houses of worship in this in this country, Lord, that they can turn to, Lord, and turn. There are, there are many lights that are shining, Lord, but Lord, dear God, we need an intervention from you, Lord, to turn them around. Turn these those with evil intent, Lord, to turn them away from the things that they are planning to do, Lord. Let your anointing flow and continue to flow, Lord. God, we continue to trust in you, Lord. We have confidence in you, Lord, as the Lord who can do all things. Because your word declares that you can do all, I can do all things to Christ who strengthened me. And I say that on behalf of our nation, Lord, on behalf of our people, Lord, that we all can do all things to Christ who strengthens us, Lord. We can turn our hearts around from all the wicked things that are taking place and turn to you as the Lord and Savior of our life. Let your Holy Spirit continue to minister to us and to guide us and change us. We ask this thing knowing that you are God alone. You are the risen Savior and will continue to be with us and provide for us because you said in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So we trust in your word and we trust in you that you you will always be there, Lord, to guide us and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in all things that we have to do. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 We thank you, dear Lord, that indeed we can come to you, that you are God, that the pandemic is not God, that the pandemic is not in charge, but you are in charge, whatever the situation. And dear God, we even realize that even as we would have opened up, as the world would have opened up, even as Trinidad and Tobago would have opened up, it doesn't mean that people are spared. And so even at this time, we, we want to remember those families, our loved ones who may be ill or we may have lost their father because of the coronavirus, dear Father. Dear God, we know that you are touched with our infirmities. You are concerned with what concerns us. And so, dear God, we lift up our loved ones, our friends, even those who we don't know, we, we, we lift up us as a nation, dear Father, as we continue to go through the situation with the panda pandemic, dear Lord. Dear God, even beyond getting well, you know, we pr pray for our over overall health for the nation, dear Father. Dear God, man, many a times, if not each time that a death is announced, you, you also hear comorbidities linked to it. So, dear Father, I, I, I want to bring that under your subjection. That is your comorbidity. Dear Father, we pray that we would walk in wellness, dear Father, that dear God, your Holy Spirit would prick us, dear Father, and provoke us as to how we eat, what we drink, you know, how we take care of our bodies, dear Father, because it is your temple, dear Lord, especially for those who have accepted you as their Savior. So dear Father, whatever the the nation needs to do, the government needs to do in terms of policies to reduce this, the scourge of comorbidities, diabetes, um, 
problems with heart, etc. Dear God, you prick their hearts to do such, dear Father. Help them to be brave to do such. And even help us to do our part, dear God. Dear Father, we, we pray for the body of Christ, even for those who are not able to come out, dear Lord, especially because of illness. You know, we, we, we pray for a time for them also to be able to come out and to be able to fellowship under, the, under our roof, dear Father. Dear God, for those who are suffering from other illnesses, dear Father, we, we put it again under our feet, dear Father, and we lift up your bloodstained banner, dear Father. For indeed, that was one of the reasons why you died on the cross, dear Father, you know, to conquer sickness, dear God, and to give us good health, dear Heavenly Father. So dear Jesus, we come to you humbly. We repent. We repent for where we would have gone wrong. Dear God, we ask you to forgive us. And we ask you to restore health, not only health physically, but you know, I even feel in my spirit to restore spiritual health, dear God, to the body of Christ, that as the word would have gone forth, that we would get into those kingdom responsibilities, dear Father, so that we would be spiritually healthy, dear Father. We talk about us running the physical race, but there's a spiritual race that is to be run and it requires us to be spiritually healthy. So dear God, we pray that even as your Holy Spirit would work in us and encourage us to live healthy lives physically, that we would even take your word into our spirit so that we would be strong spiritually, so that we would be rapture ready, dear God. Dear God, we, we heard today, especially as the Pentecost week is in session, that persons are missing. And dear God, we don't know what the reason might be. But if it be because of physical health problems or even spiritual health problems, we go into the spirit realm and we break those chains in the name of Jesus. We break those chains in the name of Jesus. And we free them, we free them in the name of Jesus so that they can move in full wholeness in Jesus' name. So again, we thank you that you are touched with our concerns and that you are ready to answer. And we praise you in advance for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise wherever you are. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yes. Could you open up for us a little so that we can hear some of the voices? Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're thanking God for hearing, yes, and answering our prayers. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord. you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the intercessors. We thank you for hearing and answering. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, thank you for your Blessed be the Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. 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 All right. So you can mute now. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, we praise God for intercessors, uh, Brother Floyd and Sister Alberta. We thank God for Sister Jordan and the ministry of the word. We thank God for Brother Ricardo Silly and the praise and worship this evening. And let me give you some announcements, please. Come Thursday morning, we're on every Thursday morning on I-95.5, and we thank God for this door opening on this radio station so that we can bring the word of God and pray 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. So you're up early, you're preparing to go out to work, to go out to school, you can tune in on I-95.5 FM. Then on Sunday morning, God's willing, we're on CCN TV 6 from 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. Empowerment through the word. 8 a.m. to 8.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. Then, of course, we come together at 8.45 to 9.15 for our time of Christian education. That is 8.45 to 9.15. And parents, here's a time, you children, you can bring your children out. There's a class for every member of the family. We begin at 8.15 a.m. Or sorry, 8.45 a.m. to 9.15 a.m. And then at 9.30 is our praise and celebration service. God's willing, this Sunday, this coming Sunday is the first Sunday, so it's a time of communion, a time of fellowship. Let us be out and, and worship and really spend time in his presence. Of course, we will be adjusting this service because we want to be back for the Pentecost rally. We are expected to be gathered at church for 4.50 p.m., that is 10 to 5, and I believe they want to begin um, precisely at 5 p.m. It's a Pentecost rally. It's the, the, the churches of Trinidad and Tobago. There will be three rallies being held simultaneously, one in Tobago, one in South Trinidad, and the other at the Cure Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International. Protocols are in place. We have lots of parking. We want you to join us, please. If you live in the South, please go to the South. You live within, uh, along the East-West Corridor and Central Trinidad, please join us at the Cure Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International, a great time of praise and worship and the word, depending on the Holy Spirit, rebuilding and reconnecting in the name of Jesus Christ. It will be good if you can read Acts chapters one and two. And, and if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, Please believe God to come true for you and, and express it in the name of Jesus Christ. And you can also go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. So that is Acts chapters 1 and 2 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Read it and, and allow the Spirit of God to do his great work in our lives. To God be the glory. Again, those of you who are joining us, we want to thank you for uh, being on the Zoom platform, Facebook, and also YouTube. And of course, I must give you these numbers because we continue on Project Caleb. Project Caleb 
I want to, we want to thank God for those of you who are giving in. We, we have had regional giving already and international giving. Thank you very much. We are celebrating 75 years as a church and we really, really are giving God praise, glory, and honor for the many of you who turned up at uh, our a youth concert, you know, last Friday. Thank you. We were packed out. We give God praise, glory, and honor. We have other things coming up soon. And as soon as we're ready, we are going to let you know. So Project Caleb, that number is 350-101-683-331. Project Caleb, that number again is 350-101-683-331. And of course, we want to, and you may be asking which bank, the Republic Bank, okay? Uh, there's another account number I want to give to you. You can go online and contribute, yes, to the ongoing support of this ministry. That number is 350-101-683-331. If you made a mistake as to which account you put it in, just put on it Project Caleb, and it will be going to Project Caleb. Amen. And that is what? What is Project Caleb? Well, there's a piece of land that we have to purchase. There's no other land within the, the sphere of the church. We need to purchase that for the glory of of God. This is where we, we are present. We are presently occupying the land. We believe in God for the full um, purchase of it and to claim it. We are claiming, we are possessing it. We are already occupying it. We just got to pay for it now for the glory of Almighty God. So those numbers again are 350 Zero one and also three five zero one zero one six eight three 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 one project Keeler. God bless you. Of course, the church is open Monday to Friday, eight a.m. to four p.m. We continue to collect to receive hampers. The people always coming off the street. I was making reference to the fact that there's a guy who came off the street and he said he came for something. Uh, you know, it was not easy to work with him, uh, but we bless God. And this is what we are having, but we've got to continue to reach out to people. People are in need and we want to be able to minister unto them. So thank you for whatever you can bring in by way of groceries to assist in this area. The numbers you can call the office during the day, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., 662-4047 or 663-9221. Those two numbers again are 662-4047 or 663-9221. Well, we have had a tremendous time in the presence of the Lord. I want you to take those scriptures again, go through them again, be in much prayer. Let's continue to pray for each other and support one another. So until we meet again, we want to thank God for our local, regional, and international audiences. Of course, you know, I cannot... Um, I itemize and identify everyone like uh, Minister Shirley Pope will do. So that is why, again, I want to thank God for our local, regional, and international uh, supporters. God bless you as we continue to do the will of God. Remember, we are not going under. We have the victory. Why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Stay safe, or rather stay blessed and stay safe. Amen and amen. Praise be 
unto God. 